Okay, so for those of you that missed last week, um, a lot of what we covered last week was a little more in-depth than I normally go. However, if you've been to some of my classes in the past, chances are uh, you've at least heard some of the grumblings about it. So, um, as we speak right now, uh, my video is uploading to YouTube. Uh, I've tried four different times and it keeps bugging out, so I had to totally cut it up, make it smaller in order to meet YouTube's requirements. Uh, it was a little over two hours, so I had to shave it down, but it takes eight hours to upload to YouTube. Really? Yeah, it's crazy, right? So. You can have a class in there? Yeah, no. <laughs> if you do a video that's two hours long on YouTube, just quit real estate and get into coaching. <laughs> yeah, it's uploading right now. Yeah, so yeah. Um, so I'll send the link out to everybody so that uh, you know you all have a chance to watch that. And at that point, you can kind of go through and we'll go from there. There we go. So let's do the whole cell phone check, just mm -hmm. since we had a reminder there. Um, just because it is being recorded, we don't want everybody feeling distracted. So Sorry. That's okay. It was a good reminder. Okay. Um, any questions from last week? Uh, some of you obviously did some homework um, from last time to this time. Uh, there were some struggles in, in the other two offices. And I just want to make sure that I cover some of that first. And, um, and then I'll kind of rehash a little bit of what we went over last week so that you're not necessarily lost right now. And then we'll just kind of go into the new content for today. So anybody have any questions as they did some of the homework? Clear as mud, right? Are you collecting the homework? Yeah, no, I won't be collecting the homework. <laughs> I know the people that would ask probably didn't do it, so. <laughs> well, the people who did it are the ones who say it, the ones who didn't. Yeah, well, that's true. So I just want to make sure. Yes. When you guys, when you asked us to write down the URL, that's that little code at the top. Yes. Okay, with all the digits yep. and all that. Okay, I just want to So make sure. here's the question. Um, on page 49 of your book, and for those that weren't here, this is kind of what the uh, homework was. So if you turn to page 49, it gives you all of the Facebook pages that I want you to create. Now, if you got tripped up on creating those Facebook pages, I'm going to actually spend the first couple minutes to show you very quickly how to do that, okay? Now, if you also have your laptop with you today, we're gonna spend some time actually doing live um, the whole second hour today. It's kind of plugging it all in. Now, if you don't have a laptop, then that's okay. You can watch as I demo up here and then share with a neighbor, so. Okay, um, I'm sorry, what was I gonna do? Oh, page 49. So the checklist, as it goes down, it tells you all of the different pages uh, that you should create on Facebook. Let me just go there. And let me, uh, just for the folks that weren't here last week, let me explain. So the top one is um, your name, real estate, and then the brand name. That's your main business page. That's the one that will be associated so that anytime somebody looks you up on Facebook by using the search bar at the top, they will see you by name. If by chance right now your main business page only has your first name in it, or some conglomeration of I love Monmouth County homes, that's not gonna do anything for you. Because when someone searches for that, they're not gonna find you. So make sure, no matter what, that you always have at least one option where your first name and last name and the Keller Williams branding is associated to you. So that as somebody is looking and searching for you, they can find you. Next one down, uh, the did you know. That is, anytime you're out, just doing whatever, hiking, biking, going to a restaurant, anything like that, try and come up with some interesting post that would say, did you know such and such, like this is the thinnest pizza in New Jersey? Or did you know this park had you know, a, a historical battle in the you know, previous century? Whatever, just anything that's a quick did you know. Can be a video, can just be a regular text post, anything like that. Can be a picture with an explanation, that's that. Now, where is, is kind of the same thing, where if, if you're in some fun places around New Jersey or especially in the target city that you might work, 
that's where what you would do there. Now the rest of these are, are all real estate related. Just listed in the county um, or just listed in the city. Homes for sale in the county or in the city that you're focusing on and then featured homes and on down the line. Now for those of you that weren't here last week, why on earth would we have 10 to 15 different Facebook pages? The key is, is that as you start to advertise, you advertise from a page, not from your personal. If it's specific, when people see it in the newsfeed as they're scrolling by, if it's not your name at the top, it's a little less intimidating to them. No one in the world wants to deal with a realtor. However, if it says featured homes in Monmouth County or featured homes in Manalapan or something like that, They'll know it's a realtor because all your compliant information is on the page. But when they're scrolling, they're just going to think it's, you know, a non-intimidating person or entity that's sharing the feature listings from within your city. Yes? So, I'm having all these Facebook pages? Yes. You should have at least 8 to 10. Now, if you only manage one or two and then build into the others, that's fine. Again, the object is, it, I'll give you stats. Am I just listed in Monmouth County page? If I put out the exact same ad on just listed Monmouth County and Brent Cramp Keller Williams, guess what would happen? My results would be five to ten times higher on the just listed page than on the Brent Cramp page. So, especially when it comes to advertising, you need to allow your content first of all to be seen and the best way for it to be seen is to have a what I call a vanity or a generic uh, Facebook page okay it's all compliant because if someone clicks on that page they'll see the cover photo is definitely you it definitely has the agency information the Keller Williams logo all of that so are these sub pages that go back to your page? yeah like so it's pages. right they're not landing pages um, because in, inside of your personal Facebook account, which I'll, I'll show you when we create one, um, you log in to Facebook personally and then you can create multiple pages. Here's the other thing, it's a popular question that comes up. So what if I have a, a page called just listed in, Mom, or in uh, Manalapan and Christine has one that's just listed in Manalapan? That's okay. Okay, you can have as many different pages that share the same name as somebody else. Um, it's not like a web domain where you're the only person that can own that domain name. So you can title it however you want. Um, at some point, someone may contact you and say, oh, you stole my name. And it, you simply say, no, I didn't steal your name. Facebook allows us to call it whatever we want. You stole my name. So, okay, so back, right? So, tube in the back, yes. Right. Is there a way of having flex, like, let's say just listed in Manalapan, for example, is there any way of having Flex automatically? Nope. Okay. It, our MLS through Flex is the least friendly API ever. So we've spent thousands of dollars to actually have it implemented into the RCS system. So there's no automatic way, I can assure you. So, yeah. When you create that just listed, is there a way to personalize that? Oh yeah, you always so personalize you can it. Do it like just listed by or Yeah, of course. So you can make it a little different than what someone else Right. Is doing. Yep. The object is is again, it, for compliance purposes, if you have permission to co-brand a listing or especially for buyers, put in the description somewhere that listing is presented by the listing agent. I'm seeking out buyers for something like that. Just to keep it above above board, okay? Now what you'll probably see um, by the spring too is the MLS may want us to start putting the, the logos, the fair housing logos and things like that in on our actual posts. Mm -hmm. Right now they haven't decided that yet, but it could be that they do. So, um, so anyways, they've just recently hired, especially in this area, they've just recently hired some dedicated people that literally sit at their computers at the MLS office all day and, and check out Facebook pages and web pages and all of that good stuff. So, so. It's a good practice just to there's no reason not to yep especially if you're promoting a listing now if you're just doing like a where is like you're out hiking and say this is the most beautiful park in Manalapan you know you're not selling a property so there's no fair housing um, you know in particular there so okay right. yes just another quick question how did we create all these pages right yep how, how are they going to show up in someone's like someone's going to search for something right hey so we're going to 
boost them and stuff yep. like that. Okay. Yep, you have to boost. And we're going to get into that today. I'm going to explain the difference between all of the objectives, how to do it inexpensively, and then how to go after something that generates more leads. So that's what all of today is all about. So we're going to get into specifics. I don't have much luck with boosting. Today's go between like I'm going to, I'll show you why. I get like 65. Yep, I'll show you why today. Okay. Yep. Once we get into the targeting, you'll start from, from today on, you'll probably start using the ads manager instead of the, the boost button from now on. So, okay. Any other questions uh, from last week? All right, so let's get right into it then. And uh, just again, because we're recording today, kind of keep your questions to a minimal. Um, write them down so that when we actually get into the hands-on stuff and, and we're working through the book, then you can ask some of the questions while people are filling things out. All right, so the Facebook changes now and in October. Um, my second book was ready to launch two and a half weeks ago and Facebook all of a sudden just annihilated what we were doing as far as categories. So that was a whole second, third, and fourth chapter that I had to rewrite, which is fine because that's what Facebook does. They always move uh, things along uh, without telling us. We just sign in and it's different. So, um, so anyways, there are major changes coming again in October. And uh, the major changes are any of the third-party data that we used to have access to, which would be uh, income for targeting, which would be uh, isolating certain groups of people based on consumer trends, we no longer will have access to that. So um, the current book that you have plus the next one I have coming out, none of those are being used anymore. So what I show you and what you'll learn to, to exactly do today will keep you safe all the way through October. My account, because of how much I've spent, has already isolated what's good and what's bad and um, you know, suggestions around it, which is uh, a positive thing. Okay, so why take the time to actually go through and create all these pages? We kind of just covered that, but it really comes down to advertising. What you post for free anymore will barely get out there. And you've probably heard me say this before. Let's say you have 100 people that like your Facebook page. What you post for free on that page will probably reach one to two people. If those people are not interested in what you said, it will then go to no more people. The only way to guarantee that people are seeing what you're posting is to pay. Now today, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the least expensive ways to do that with zero contact and lead generation options and a slightly more expensive way to do it where you'll actually get name, email, and phone number. Okay. In the end, we're going to use one method to just kind of spray the word out there and then we're going to try and capture them into what they call a custom audience and then we're going to come back to them with a second ad that looks after trying to get them, uh, get us a, a lead. Okay? So um, there's ways around having to pay the max amount, but in the end you should expect to pay. And if you, if you don't have the ability to pay, I've often made suggestions, even to some of my clients, get a part-time job. And if you can make $50 to $100 a week at a part-time job, pour all 100% of that into advertising your business so that over the next two to three months, guess what happens? You now have a contact list, some name, number, and email. You've used a part-time job in order to facilitate uh, the expense of ads. Okay? Um, sometimes we have to do what we got to do to build our business. It's short-lived, but it's an investment in the growth of your business. Right? So, very important, I'm going to differentiate for you the difference between a post on your business page and what we call a dark post. Everybody has a business page, obviously. Whatever you post, we just went through, is seen by very few people. You can press the boost button. What? That's exactly what it does for you. It used to work. You can press the boost button 
and it just kind of sprays it out to the very few people that you demographically target. All it is is basically my equivalent to taking a can of paint and saying I want to paint that wall and going <laughs> and, and hoping that you just get nice even coverage and that the spot you really wanted to isolate actually gets paint on it. Not very good, right? Let's say you had a square right here that you wanted to reach with that paint and you just kind of went like that. You would probably get some coverage in there, but it would be all over the place too. Then you'd probably get mad and you'd pay somebody to come in and fix it. So the idea is, if we're going to paint in the square, we've got to just be able to isolate it. And that's what we call a dark post. Okay? And the dark post can only be created from within the Ads Manager. And we're going to get into the Ads Manager. We're going to walk all the way through it. The idea is whatever you post through the Ads Manager alone will never be seen on the front end of Facebook. So you could tell just ridiculous lies if you wanted to and no one would see it except for the people inside of the square. Now, obviously I don't recommend going out there and telling lies, but the idea is, is that through the Ads Manager only, you can isolate who sees a post and who doesn't. One of the most effective things here. How many of us have Facebook pages that are almost, almost always exclusively our fans, our realtors? What would be the purpose in pressing the boost button and only having realtors see what we have uh, just listed? I mean, sure, they'll be proud of us, but none of them will ever buy or sell with us, right? Yeah. So we have to have a way to ignore all the people out here and isolate the people that are most likely to buy and sell with us. The only way to do that is to go into the Ads Manager and work it through there. Okay, so the dark post, the reason it's called the dark post is because nobody but the people you target will ever see that information. So if you choose in your targeting, which again we'll go through, but if you choose uh, 25 to 40 year old men that live in Manalapan, that love wine and cigars and all of that, that's who's going to see your post. But nobody else. Nobody that likes your page unless they fit in that demographic. That's the difference. And a lot of people waste a lot of money just pressing the boost button. It goes out and they get zero results and they wonder why. Well, it's because you're just kind of spraying it against the wall and hoping. What we don't want to do is that. What we want to do is go into the ads manager and we want to get really tight with whom it is that sees our message. Okay. So we just talked about post boosting via the Ads Manager. I'm going to show you that. And here we go. So if you have your computers, log into Facebook. Can they go get it? Yeah, sure. I usually don't get that boost thing. I don't know why. Like maybe I'm on a different page. Um, the boost button doesn't show up? No. If I go in home, there is the boost button here. Yeah, there's no boost button here because this is your personal page. Personal page. Oh, okay. Yeah, this isn't your business. I'm going to show you how to get to your business pages in, in a minute. So, okay. Most of the time, if you have a business page, you'll get to your business page um, up in this, uh, in the part that says my or your pages. You can drop this down. Now, I have probably a hundred pages in here, some of which I'm an admin for other uh, clients. So, you know, you're seeing all sorts of stuff on mine. This is what you want to look for here. In the Explore section, you can click the link that says Ads Manager. If you've never been there before, you may have to drop down the See More, and then it could go to Ads Manager. If that's not available, then you simply go to Facebook.com slash ads slash manager and it will take you there okay so either way let's all get to the ads manager facebook.com facebook slash ads slash 
manager. By the end of this class, I can almost assure you that none of you will ever use the boost button ever again because you'll see the value in not doing that. And it's really not that difficult. Once, that's why we've got a nice two hour long session to go through it. <coughs> now, your screen could look like mine or it could look like um, you could have two boxes. So I'm just going to walk around and see, make sure that we're all in the right place. This is you? Yes, it's low. Click the ads manager there. Oh, okay. It's just being slow? Completely <laughs> different. Yes. If you're on a tablet, you may have issues. So follow along with me. You're good. You're good. You're good. Okay, so you don't have the link yet, so you'll type in facebook.com slash ads. Oh, it's still I, going, that's yeah, why. Yeah, I did that. It's all right, it's just the internet's being slow. Slash ads slash... Manager. It says leave the page. I did that. Yeah, you can leave the page. There you go. It's coming in for you. Because you're asking me for the code generator. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, they may send it to your cell. That's something I've not seen before. I may have to help you with that after. <coughs> you're good. Sam, you're good. Paul, you're good. Okay. So far, so good. Yep. That's fine. So, if you have a bunch of pop-up boxes at the top, on the far right-hand side, you'll see the X's. Just close those out. You're good. Okay. So, yeah, at, at the top, you'll see uh, blue bars on the left, just X out on the. So, in the Ads Manager itself, there are three tabs. And here's how the breakdown goes. You have, oh boy, it's not fun. I'm gonna run out of space. The master level is called the campaign. And then in campaigns, you can break down into other levels called ad sets. And then you can further break down from there to do specific ads. So let's say I had um, a home value campaign that I wanted to run. And I wanted to target one of the ads to just men, another to just women, and one to men and women over 55. I could break them all out like that and then each one of these could have a separate ad. So in the men only, I might show just a picture of a woman. In the women only, I might show just a picture of a man. In the 55 and over, it might be a couple that's 55 plus. Same message, but maybe we just alter the picture. Because in advertising, and if you think about what you see on TV every day, what's advertised on the Lifetime Network is going to be significantly different than what's advertised on ESPN. It might be the same per, or it may be the same product, the same message, but the, the pictures of the people will be significantly different. It's the same in, in all of our advertising as well. We want to isolate the people that are most interested in certain things with the pictures that they associate. Okay? And if you ever have any questions about that, you can text me and just say, hey, I want to isolate to somebody like this. What picture should I use? And at that point, I'll make a few suggestions to you and you'll be light years ahead of where you uh, would normally be. Okay? Now, so we've got here in these tabs, we've got campaigns, ad sets, and ads. If by chance you have a post that you've boosted in the past, you will see it show up here. Okay? Because the ads manager tracks every ad activity that you've ever done on Facebook. All right? So, that's the basics, and we're going to get into the ad types in a minute. Now, the one thing I want to do with everybody before we move forward is I want to help you to protect yourself because Facebook 
you can spend and spend and spend and spend once a month they'll bill you or if you press the boost button they'll bill you at the end of a campaign one of our uh, agents over in central launched an ad from the ads manager wasn't quite sure how to navigate it was trying to sell a home in Manalapan and she actually advertised it to the whole United States <laughs> and forgot that she had launched it and had not set a stop date on it. Her credit card got billed at the end of the month for $579. Did she sell the house? <coughs> Did not, well, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> maybe that's a good investment, you're right. <laughs> she sold it, yeah. I guarantee you when we looked through the stats, it didn't even touch people in New Jersey, okay? Oh my so, I mean, literally it was wide open. It was just going to anybody that had an account on Facebook. Like, no home buyers, no nothing. So, anyways, so she had to fight and fight and fight with credit card company and Facebook. I mean, in the end, it was her fault, right? So they credited back a portion of it, but it took months, you know? And then, of course, when she came to my first Facebook class, she was like, ah, well, I would hate using Facebook because listen to what they did to me, you know? So here's what I want to help you do today. I want to have you set an account spending limit. And if you were with me in one of my Facebook classes before, you may have already done that. So tune out for five minutes. Um, basically, the way you set an account spending limit is, in the top, you click the three lines that are up here, and then you roll down to the bottom of this, roll over all tools, and then all the way to the right-hand side, you're going to see a link that says billing. Click that link that says billing, and it will take you to um, your billing screen. Now. What you want to then do is all the way on the right hand side, you're going to click the payment settings button. You'll see the credit card they already have on file if there is one, if not, then that's fine. Then you'll see set your account spending limit at the bottom. Now, everybody look up just for a sec because I want everybody to make sure they understand this. This is an entire account. This is not individual post boosts or ads manager ads, okay? This is not where every campaign you launch stops. This is if you have five campaigns all going at one time and they're each individually spending money, Facebook, once it gets to this limit, will stop all of your account spending, all right? Just pretend it's a brick wall and it's, you just cannot get through that brick wall. <coughs> they will alert you at nauseum that you're coming close to your spending limit because their, you know, their, uh, their best result is for you to go in and adjust the spending limit. I'm telling you, protect yourself by either going in $100 increments or in $50 increments, whatever you feel comfortable doing so that if the train ran out of control, that it would stop. Now, for me, because of what I spend and because of what my clients spend, I have a limit set at $5,200 per month. I don't have to pay for all that, somebody else does. <coughs> but um, in the end, if I had it set at 100 or 200, it would lapse in one day. One of my clients spends almost $200 a day, four days a week on, on ads, all right? So I have to have it set much higher than most. For you guys, on what you're going to do if you set it in the $100 or $200 increments, you're good to go. Now, on the ad set level as well, you can set your individual daily and lifetime budgets to protect yourself, but in the event that something were to happen, you got sick and you let it run perpetually, this is just an extra fail safe to say, I'm not gonna spend any more than this, okay? All right, so to exit back out of that, we're gonna click the three buttons at the top or the three lines, and we're gonna go back to the ads manager. Yes? Um, okay, like me, I have 
seventy dollars almost. Yep. So what what am I gonna do when I reach the hundred? So the account would just stop if you reach the hundred. Now you can reset it or you can give yourself a boost. Okay. So it's not like a credit check or anything where they're running your credit and saying, Oh yeah, we've approved you for another two hundred dollars. It's on the honor system unless you don't pay and then they get angry. So okay. So the idea is um, it, our thresholds usually for those of us that are agents that only boost every now and then, e when you hit a $150 tab with Facebook, they'll charge you until you've paid that two or three times and then it goes up to 500 and then it's just a monthly thing. Okay. Either way, worst or best case scenario, they charge you once a month or probably at $150 spend at this point. All right, so let's get into the ad types. Everybody um, go to the create button Press the button, and it's going to pull up a screen that looks like this. Now, some of you, if you've not been here before, will see two boxes. One that says guided creation, and I can't remember what the other one says, but press the button that says guided creation. If you have another pop-up box that it looks like a previous ad is there, just um, scroll to the bottom, and it'll have start over as an option. Oh, like this. If it looks like this, just press start over. Your screen will eventually look like this. So I'm going to walk around and make sure that we all get in the same page. You're good. You're good, good. <laughs> so um, uh, just click in the white space right there. The button's hiding right there. Oh. Yep. So I have a little bit of screen. If you're on the mobile, that um, I'll explain those along with this. Just hit the green. Yeah. So go to ads manager. Yeah. Yep. And then hit create button. Okay. Yep. You good? You good? Perfect. Oh, you're in an ad already. So um, go up to uh, campaign. The next one. Yeah, just click that and it'll go back to this. Perfect. Okay, so let me explain to you what we're going to use and what we're not. Brand awareness and reach we will not use. Okay, conversions, catalog sales, and store visits we will not use. Now some of you may have a website that actually uh, subs as an e-commerce type site. At that point you could do catalog sales and Facebook would track how far along the process someone got, whether they visited a property, whether they looked at the property, whether they added it to a favorites or a wish list or something. It would track each one of those, but for most of us, we don't have that. So in the end, that it's a powerful feature. If you ever get that, um, I would it's an investment though. So here's what we will do. We will do traffic, we will do engagement, we will do video views, lead generation and messages. Now in my other book that's coming, I explain each one of those in detail. I'm also going to do that with you now, but if you get a little glazed over, it's okay. It'll be in the book so you can read about it. Traffic. We use traffic predominantly for things like home value. The intent or a guide. Let's say you had a, um, a buyer's guide or a seller's guide. The intent of a traffic ad is to take someone from Facebook and dump them somewhere else. I do not use these for property listings because there's an extra, um, there's lead generation that works better for property listings. All right? Traffic. This will cost you about four times as much as what engagement will cost you. Because the intent is, when you use the traffic option, you want to take somebody off of Facebook, so Facebook punishes you because you're making someone leave Facebook, so you have to pay extra for that. Also, typically when you're taking them off of Facebook, you're wanting to collect name, phone number, and email, which Facebook is all in favor of, but they find it more invasive than just engagement, which is just asking people to comment, like, share, click pictures, whatever. All right? So, traffic, 
should be what you use if you want to take someone from Facebook off of Facebook with the intent of getting a name, phone number, and email. Do not use this for properties. No one will sign up on your website for information about a property because they can go to Zillow, Trulia, and all the rest without having to do so. Yes? Facebook tells you you're leaving that page, right? Um, probably. Yeah. I mean, it says yeah. you're leaving this yes. page. Yes. Yeah. Most likely, yeah. That's a good question. I'm not sure I ever knew, but I, it could be. I mean, I click on ads all the time just so that I can find out the retargeting that I get back, which I'll talk about, but um, I'm not sure I've ever noticed that. So. They say you're about to leave Facebook. Really? They, may, they say a warning like it might not be safe. Are you, are you Interesting. Huh. Click yes. I'm not sure I've ever recognized that before. I'll have to look next time. <laughs> engagement. The most the popular way to uh, think about an engagement is if you press the boost button on your post, you are doing an engagement ad. Okay, now obviously you don't have to go into the ads manager in order to do that because you do it at the post level on your business page. However, that's the kind of ad that's chosen. Engagement does the following. All the intent of an engagement ad is to get comments, likes, and shares, and possibly a click to a link off of Facebook. Your intent or your goal should be to mass accumulate comments, likes, and shares with an engagement ad. Your expectations should never be, I'm going to get a name, phone number, and email. The difference is, on a good engagement ad, like we, I use engagement ads almost predominantly for an open house on a listing that's at least two weeks old. For uh, a good one that performs very well, that's maybe $5 a day, $20 over four days, you should expect your engagement ads to um, have like one to two cent clicks or engagements, comments, likes, and shares. So the way we do that is, let's just talk about an open house ad is, rule number one, multiple pictures. If you have one picture on a post, people will scroll right on by. It's not interesting enough to them. And what often happens is we'll copy the link from our Flex MLS, we'll post it in there, we'll see the picture automatically pop up and be like, done. No one cares, because unless they want to buy a home, they're not going to click. However, there's plenty of people out there that look at a year in advance even, and if you've got multiple pictures and they're clicking on every single one of those pictures, now you can collect their information without them knowing and put it into a custom audience, which is what we're going to do after this. You can put only five pictures, I understand. No, you can, you can put up to ten. You can put lots more than that. Now, in a boost, you might not. Um, if you press the boost button, it might limit that. Yeah. But through the ads manager, you can upload lots. Okay. Yep. Unless, I will say this, unless they changed it in the last couple of weeks. Which, again, they don't call me and say, hey, Brent. <laughs> Zuckerberg again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they don't tell me. All right. So engagement. The only reason to do engagement is this is that you're going to get whatever you're promoting in the message much more cheap than uh, some of the other options. The best open house uh, ad I ever did for somebody, we got something around the .0028 cents per click. So for every five clicks or every four clicks it cost us one penny, which is pretty good. You know, we reached, I think, 6,800 people with a budget of $20 or so. Not bad. And she went in then and said, hey, reached almost 7,000 people, need a price reduction, they gave it to her. Cost $20. She said it cost way more, but I didn't tell her to say that. Okay, so that's why we use engagement. Cheap clicks, especially if you're looking for a price reduction, it works very, very well. Video views. 
We spent a little time last week talking about video views. I'm going to tell you a lot more next week starting about video and how you can either appear on video or not and why video views are very important. Here's the key with video views. A video views option, you can actually capture people as they're watching the video. You can capture them if they've watched 10% of the video, 25% of the video, 50, 75, and 95%. So let's say you have a just listed or a coming soon and someone watches 10% of the video. Do you think they're high on that property? No. No. If they watch 95%, do you think they're high on that property? Yes. Absolutely they are. I'm running some ads right now for a reverse mortgage company. We're running them as video views because I know in that one minute video, if somebody watches 75 to 95 percent of that video, they're probably more likely to fill out the form that we want on the landing page. The difference here also is, is that even if they don't fill out the form on the page, I can then serve the people that have watched this length with another ad and another ad and another ad and another ad until they finally call us either spam or fill out a form. Because inevitably, five messages deep might be the problem that they have that they need solved. But it may take us five, five different chances to get at them. If you've been in any of my classes before, you'll also know that most of the time, people will need to, people that don't know you will have to see you sometime between five and seven times before they'll respond. Well, this is your key. Let's say you have 100 people that watch your video and 10 of these people go all the way to 75% or 95%. You can feed these 10 with a second, third, and fourth, and fifth ad. And instead of paying sometimes $2 a click, you're paying 25 cents a click. It's gold. All right, and it's not that hard. We're gonna set it up. The idea is, you can't do that by pressing the boost button. You can only do it through the ads manager. And it's a whole set of things. The other beauty is, is as we follow through the book and we do this together, you set it up once and then just start collecting all this data. For every time somebody goes to a page, every time somebody watches a video, it all just gets collected. That's how you strategically spend a good amount of dollars per day but in multiple places and you start to see the contacts roll in a little bit more. All right, and most of the time, as you'll see when we set it up, Facebook collects the data over 365 days. So, so long as somebody's in, um, been in that audience, you keep them for at least 365 days. And if they re-engage, then it's a, it extends the time. All right, lead generation. This is my favorite type for coming soon and just listed. Takes a little while to set up, probably 10, 15 minutes for, per ad. The beauty is, is that when people click on the property uh, that you're boosting, I say boosting loosely because we're not pressing the boost button, but when they click through, when they try to click through, they're then presented, before seeing the property, they're presented with a form on Facebook and Facebook automatically fills in the data on the form with what they're registered with. Okay. At that point, before they can see the property, they have to fill out the form and submit it. But because it's already pre-filled, chances are pretty good. Um, we're running an ad for Christine right now on a just listed. And as of this morning, I think there was 15 clicks on the ad and five or six leads that already had come in with name, email, and phone number. At three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, at three o'clock in the morning, ding, ding, here it comes. So. All right, now, costs on that, are they range around a, a dollar per, per contact. Now, on the contacts that come in, for every 100 contacts, you can probably expect three to four will actually pick up the phone and talk to you. And of those that pick up the phone and talk to you, it's, it's a good chance that you might get a client out of that. So let's say it costs you a dollar to receive any of those. Now you're a hundred dollars deep and you possibly have three to four people that could do business with you now or in the future. 
That's a pretty good investment. Actually, I did with the other we did, I'm working with one person right now of getting them pre-approved. Great. It hopefully it works. Okay, so we did one with Claudia about, what, three weeks ago maybe mm -hmm. on a new listing. And I think you got like 17, 18. 18 leads out of it for a cost of $25, if I'm not mistaken, maybe $20, okay? And she's got a client that's getting pre-approved right now. Pretty good, right? We also um, have some really good success with 55 and over communities. Um, you know, in any given month, there's, I don't know, three to 400 of those leads that come in at about 85 cents a piece. A lot of them pick up the phone. A lot of them answer their texts. It, it's a nice way. Some of them are far out, but in the end, you've, you know, that's where your phone skills come in. But they've inquired to you, you haven't inquired to them. So, you know, you would hope three to four out of 100, but with the 55 and overs, I, we ran one for Louise. What do you think out of the 75 or so? 10 talk to you maybe? At least. Yeah. So, you know, in the end, we're spending a little money. Some people are, you know, down the road a bit, but in the end, you're creating some contacts along the way that are likely to do business with you. Okay? You see how it can pay off. Now, I, I've had other people, just so you know, in California, some of my clients, for every $400 they spend, they get three or four people. It's just more cost. But you also have to remember, when they sell a home in California, their commissions are like off the charts. $20,000 on a commission is easy for them. Mm -hmm. So they should expect to pay four or $500 per contact that actually comes through. All right. So lead generation is great for the primary purpose that it auto fills the information that's registered in, um, in Facebook for them. Perfect for a just listed and coming soon. Absolutely perfect. Messages. If by chance you've got one uh, listing that's maybe a little bit older or you're co-marketing on a listing, if you would rather them not necessarily go straight to the property or you don't want to use the lead generation option, when they click on the link that says learn more uh, about this property, it opens Messenger. And now you can have a personal conversation with them instead through Messenger. Now one of the agents here, Carol, she has an ad that I set up for her a long time ago and over the past, I don't know, six months, she's hundreds of people have responded and she's working, you know, at least three or four have gotten pre-approved and now they're, they're working. All right. Messenger works too. So if you're going to run Messenger though, you can tuck this in your, in your brain. Don't run it with people that are about 50 and over because a lot of them don't use Messenger because it's an extra app that you have to download on your phone. They just don't want to be bothered. But if you use texting with them, they love it. They will respond to text messages all day long. All right? So use Messenger. I mean, there's people on Facebook, especially in the millennial generation, the only reason they have Facebook is because they use Messenger. So that's a good, good option for them. So those are the differences. Okay. We'll go through if we have a little time at the end, but I want to get into the audiences now. So in, at the top where it says Ads Manager, I want you to click the three lines. For me, I frequent the audiences. In the left-hand side that auto-populates, you may have the word audiences. If you do, click it. If you don't, go to All Tools. Go across to the third um, column and click the word audiences. Not to be uh, mistaken with audience insights. Those are two different ones. All right, so let me walk around and see if how we're doing here. That's okay, you can leave that. Yep, click that. Yep, yep, you can leave the page. Good. It, it might be. That's actually a new interface from Thursday even, wow. from last week. So I haven't even had a chance to go through that. Yeah. My mom <laughs> oh, Roberta. Uh -huh. Click here. Oh, it's still thinking. That's yeah, why. it's still thinking. Yeah, it'll catch up to you. 
you think faster than the computer can work. Okay, so, yep, that's fine. Okay. Okay, yep. So, some of you will have a screen that looks like mine. Some of you will have a blank screen with three buttons here. We're going to, regardless, if your screen looks like mine, we're going to hit create audience here. If you have the three buttons, one of those buttons will also say create audience. After we've done this once and saved an audience, um, we won't, you won't ever see the three buttons again. So let's go to saved audience first. So we're going to, uh, if you've got it, looks like mine, it's the third option down. Okay, everybody should have a pop-up that looks like that. And if you look in your book, it will be the start of, let's go to page 70. We're going to practice this by doing, uh, setting up a FISBO audience. Now here's the key. If you use Ads Manager, you're always presented with the demographics of the people you want to see the ad. Instead of having to um, enter this information in every single time, you can pre-set up audiences that would normally uh, be ready for you. So, if you know the FISBO is always going to be the FISBO, almost the same information every time, it's a, uh, it's a good practice to set it all up ahead of time. The same with your first time home buyers, the same with a lot of audiences. Because in the end, every time you release an ad, it will save you at least five to ten minutes, if not more. And once you're in that screen, you can always edit it later. So, let's practice doing this. At the very top, and if you follow in the book, I tell you what to do. Uh, page 70. All right. In the audience name, and just so you know too, in the other book that's coming, I give you 25 of my best performing ads with screenshots, and it'll tell you name it this, name it that, name it this, name it that, and the ads are all included, okay? So in the audience name, we want to keep track of these is um, in the most orderly way possible. So let's say we're doing a FISBO audience. You would name it FISBO dash, and if you're going to concentrate on a city or a county, mention that, okay? So maybe we say FISBO dash Monmouth County. Just for the purposes capital of doing this. Not Doesn't matter. Yeah, it's just the title. It's, it's basically so when you start the ad, you can look and see, oh, I already made, uh, made this audience, so I'm going to select it. All right. Very important. This will default to this after you've done it once, but we, in the locations area where it has the drop down, we want to select people who live in this location. Sometimes uh, Facebook will default to anybody in this location. That's not good because we live on route to New York City, so anybody that drives through New Jersey could be in this audience, and now you're wasting a whole bunch of money. You could have a FISBO that's driving from, you know, somewhere in South Carolina, passes through New Jersey, they might see your ad. Well, that's not going to do you any good. So we always want to see the people who live in this location. Now, how does Facebook know where we live? Anybody? GPS. What's that? GPS. GPS, yeah. We all have location turned on on our phones most of the time, right? Yeah. If you've been in the same location multiple times, that being your home, Facebook knows where you live. They also know where you work. They know where you hang out. <coughs> okay? So yeah, watch where you hang out. Okay? <laughs> Facebook knows. All right, next. The location, what should we put? Yeah, so in the locations, here's what we're going to do. If you want to specialize in a certain city or just the county, whatever, there's two different ways to do that. So everybody look up for a sec. I'm going to type in here Colts Neck. Now, as it picks out a city that you've typed, 
it's going to show up in blue. When you see it show up in blue, you click it, it will automatically draw a circle around that city for a 25 mile radius. That's not bad. But let's say in this FISBO audience, you didn't want to include the people that are in Keensburg or the people that are in Tom's River or, you know, you don't want to include those. So you have a couple other options. Let's say you just wanted to isolate those that would be in Colts Neck. You then can click this uh, upside down arrow and at the top it says current city only. And you could click that and then it isolates just to Colts Neck. So everybody do that. So Choose whatever city you want. To exactly. If you were just doing Fisbo Colts Neck, then you could just say Fisbo Colts Neck. Now, in the end, for a Fisbo, you would never do Fisbo Colts Neck because there might be like 15 that are actually Fisbo in Colts Neck. And at that point, Facebook wouldn't even, they wouldn't get into those 15. It's just not enough data for them to work with. So, okay? So, now you could choose multiple cities. So let's say you only wanted to focus on FISBOs in 20 different cities. You could do those 20 cities. Also, you could do zip codes. So I live in Tinton Falls, so I know that the zip code is um, 107724. Uh, I could pick the zip code. And if you pick a zip code, you see that it actually gives you a nice area that it shows for the zip code. Now, special trick, I didn't tell everybody else because I like you guys better. That's what you say to all the girls. I, well, I might have. <laughs> so let's say my address here is 74 Squonkum. Squonkum Road in Tinton Falls. Let's say I was a FISBO. I could literally isolate 20 to 30 FISBOs that I'm interested in, type in all 30 of their home addresses. Shh, don't tell anybody. Okay? And at this point, you can isolate within one mile of that address. Now this is something you're not going to learn from most other people, but I can assure you that it works if you take the time to set it up. Say it again. What's that? Say it again. So if you want to isolate things like FISBOs or expireds, you can literally take their address, type it in. You would also want to do 20 to 30 others. You can only isolate to a mile, but as you can see when we add in the interest targeting to come, guess what happens? If it's somebody within that mile that's interested in being a for sale by owner, Facebook's probably going to match them up. There is a high likelihood that a FISBO from within that one mile radius is going to see your ad. One of my most popular ads for FISBOs is the 10 reasons, or no, the 10 ways to stop realtor phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> it gets clicked on constantly. And then you introduce yourself as a realtor, you send them the 50 page marketing plan, and guess what? You're not only their hero, but they're also interested in the value you have. Okay? See how many people use that. So if they are not listed for sale by owner yet, but they've been just searching on their computer how to sell your home by yourself, that's very possible. Like that. Yep. Here's another one that I never tell anybody, and I certainly haven't told the other two classes. If you go on Zillow and you go to the make me move yeah. addresses, yeah. you can isolate those folks too. Chances are those people have not yet come out and said that I'm a FISBO, but in essence they're a FISBO because if somebody walked in with a suitcase full of cash and said, you know, here's $400,000 for your home, would you sell it? They'd probably say yes, when that makes them a FISBO. Okay? Don't tell anybody I said that. You're taping it. Oh. <laughs> Forget that. No. That's right. Rewind. So, do you see the power already in this? You press the boost button, none of this happens. None. 
So here's what I want you to do. Oh, let's go down to the next section. My fault. So how you save it? You have yep. to save it. We haven't even got there yet. We'll go to the bottom. Now we're going to pick ages. People in the FISBOs, obviously, most homeowners are at least 25 or above. FISBOs could go all the way up to you know 80s and 90s. So you want to leave it pretty open. For uh, demonstration purposes, we'll choose, I don't know, 26. Now, if you lived in Manhattan, and it was FISBO land in Manhattan, which gender is most likely to be a FISBO, male or female? Male. male. Yes. Right? So, if you had enough data for uh, Facebook to work with, you then, for this FISBO audience, would probably choose men. I think in the book I, I tell you to choose men. In our area, there's probably so few FISBOs now, you want to just leave it open to both male and female. All right? Detailed targeting. This is really where the good stuff happens. You don't have to follow the book now. If you look up, if I type in right here, for sale by owner, it pops up as an interest. I can click that. Facebook knows across the United States of those that have posted on Facebook and or have gone to forsalebyowner.com and or have looked up articles on for sale by owners. There's 3,048,660 people in the United States that have looked up for sale by owner information. I'm going to click that. If I roll up to the top on the right hand side, it shows that within all of the targeting I've chosen, less than 1,000 people in our area have. So let me point out to you now that I've mentioned that. Optimal targeting on Facebook, you should never be under 1,000. Because it's not enough data for Facebook to have in their possession to get you quality results. In our zip codes and in our cities, we want at least a minimum of 5,000. So, if your zip code or your city doesn't allow you at least 5,000, you need to include another city or zip code. So, is there, how do you, if you wanted to do all of Monmouth County? You have to do individual cities or you do the radius. Okay. So yeah. Do Unfortunately, all the cities yeah. They don't have the county option. I think they used to, but every time I've tried it in the past even month or so, it, you can't do a county. Optimal data. So if you're running your coming soon and just listed ads, optimal data is 25,000 or more. And the closer you can get to 50,000, the better off you are. Now obviously if you're doing you know, city related stuff, you're not going to get to 50,000 very often. Boy, I burned through almost every pen they have here. <laughs> yeah, need to start bringing my own, I guess. <laughs> Thank you, that would be fantastic. All right, so just because um, we're here at this point, we've selected all of this now. Who do we want to exclude from this? Because we don't want what group of people to see our ads, ever. Realtors. Exactly. So there's a couple shoe-ins on this for sure. Real estate broker. And as it pops up in the gray area to the, the right, you want to isolate the one that says job title. Now, Facebook knows of all the people on Facebook right now that have said, I'm a real estate agent or broker, 575,000. All right? So there's a million and a half realtors, licensed realtors in the US. So a third of them have just at least proclaimed it out on Facebook. Now, across the US, in most states besides New Jersey and some of the other East Coast states, everyone is referred to as a real estate broker. For us, we're a real estate agent, but that's more common to our little area than it is across the U.S. in mass. Okay, so that's why we pick real estate broker. Thank you. Very nice. That one works. Good. Yep. 
Real right. So, yep, absolutely. So we'll select that one, real estate broker. We'll also select um, realtor, and it's got 238,000. Now, this is where we also think outside the box. How many of you know Inman News? Um, yep. Yep. Okay. Only realtors read Inman News because it's kind of insider info. If a homeowner thought something was interesting on Inman News, they would go there, they would read five sentences, and the rest of the website is all grayed out. You have to be a subscriber in order to read a full thing. No one from the community is going to subscribe at a monetary amount to a realtor type website. So we would type in Inman News, which is another 285,000. Then you can also do Zillow Premier Pro. Zillow Premier Agent means that if you've ever gone while logged into Facebook into your Zillow account and gone into your agent dashboard there, Facebook knows that you went in there. The only way to go into Zillow Premier is to be an agent. So Zillow knows. Okay. The same with Realtor.com Pro. You can add that in. That's usually enough. Facebook will at that point say, okay, we get it. You want to isolate and forget all of the Realtors at this point. Could some slip through the cracks? Absolutely. All right, so here's what I want you to do for practice before we create the audience. Go through the book on page 70. Create this FISBO audience. And uh, all you have to do with the suggestions that I've given you is you type in, especially in the additional interest section, you type in the last word that's in the line. And then as you roll over the name, it will show you what I have typed in here. Whether it's additional interest or inter, uh, additional interest and in demographics and all of that. So if you type in everything that I've suggested to you here, this is exactly what I use when I release my ads. 100%. I don't have any nifty magic wand that I use other than what I've already published. So. Go ahead and build the FISBO audience, just for practice, just so you know that, that you can. And then at that point, for homework today, you'll go through the rest of those saved audiences and any that you believe that you would use, go ahead and do it. Because it only takes three or four minutes in order to build these audiences. And then going forward as we build ads, you can just select those audiences going forward. And they're already pre-built for you. So start over? Save the one we just did or? You, so long as you save one and you know the process, you're good. If you want to continue to build a couple others while we're waiting, then that's fine. Um, yeah. Do you yeah. select engagement? With, with oh, no, you're in the ad part. So create audience and then save the audience. Yeah, you are in the custom audience. That We're going to get to that one next. Do you do anything with language? So here's the interesting thing. I used to use language a lot, especially if I knew there were certain demographics that like to be in certain areas, but Facebook doesn't allow us to do that anymore. So, which is probably good because that kind of does cross the line a little bit. But yeah. How I move this to here? You don't. Okay, so here's a good question. Claudia would like to move these around. These are in no order of, of uh, priority, okay? Facebook puts them wherever they want, so you don't have to move them around. Okay? okay. Even though it doesn't come out like the same as yours. Yep, no, it, it could look different. Yep. Definitely no, um, no order of importance. Yes? I can't get into it. Okay, let's see. It's showing up like demographics. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Oh, you're in Audience Insights. That's why you want to be in this one, Audiences. 
That's why. Oh. There, and then click the top one that says create audience. My fault. That one, the saved audience. Then you can go through all that. Okay. Yeah. Would you include because in interests? So would you include any of these? Yep. So, good question. In the FISBO, would I also include like uh, Zillow and Trulia and Redfin and all that? Yeah. Because most FISBOs aren't just going to sell and go rent somewhere. They're going to go buy somewhere else. But what about where it under suggestions where it has house hunting, buying a house, yep. red fin, yep. include it all? Yep, absolutely. And so all you're basically telling Facebook is, if they happen to match here, add them in. If they happen to match here, add them in. Now what Facebook sometimes ends up doing is they'll find a little sweet spot on one particular interest and they'll just start plugging it. Boom, 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 and they'll forget a bunch of the others. Which can be good for results, but it can also be really bad. Because if, if you happen to hit a group of people that aren't particularly um, even eligible for the home you might be trying to sell, then all of a sudden you're getting a bunch of leads that you don't necessarily want because th they don't qualify. So. I don't understand how, like when, with these over here that have like the little carrot thingies. Yeah, so type in so the last did, word. So I did mortgage loans and then it came up like this, exactly mm -hmm. how you have it shown. Mm -hmm. But then when I did like renovation, for instance, it did, it just put it up there. It yeah, it, it won't necessarily go in that order. It won't show this interest, additional interest. Like yeah, it's not no, it, yeah, like it's fine, yep. I was just wondering. Because if you roll over like that. This. How come this one did like put that in there? Um, it could. Um, if you scroll down a little bit, it's probably, um, scroll, I'm sorry, up. That's, it, oh, it's right there. So yeah, all of those are in the same category, so. Like, are these two CDs too close? I should just CD one, just use one? Because it doesn't drop. Yeah, exactly, because you're at a 10 mile radius there. So they overlap. So then at that point, you would just choose the, the city itself. So click. You could click that and just choose the current city. And then it just isolates the city, or you can draw the, the radius. Okay. Hold on one sec. I'm sorry, in this one, do you select anything? Nope. In the custom audience, you don't say anything. Yes? Add locations in bulk. What does that mean? So you can um, import, I think, in that, which means that if you had like a CSV to upload, like with multiple things, then you could do it that way, I think. Gender as male, instead of, I'm sorry. So, it, again, if you were in a metropolitan area like Manhattan, uh -huh. almost all FISBOs are male. So you would isolate it just to males at that point. For coupons, where you, it shows here interest, additional interest coupons. When you put coupons in, it comes up as interest, shopping, and fashion. Shopping. Okay, it could be multiple. So, so you, use that one? you could still use it, yeah. So here's an interesting thing. Why would I put coupons or frugality for a FISBO? Money. Exactly. That's one of the primary things they struggle with is overpaying for anything. So by all means, you can isolate people that are FISBOs that are also frugal and those, you know, that are couponers and all of that. By all means. Yeah, detailed interest. Yes. As you're putting in all these things, are you constantly checking on the potential audience where you want to increase it? Yes. Right? But what if you're doing all these things and it's not increasing it? Then, you're, then your city scope is probably too tight. So if you just are isolating to a city and it's not getting over like a thousand in the group, then you need to broaden the, the uh, scope a little bit. So putting group on or retail me not would also work? Sure. Yeah. Now at some point, everything that you add additionally is probably going to be counterproductive because then what happens is Facebook might serve it and find that sweet spot as all the retail me not people and forget that they were a FISBO. So it's not that one thing is going to relate to the next, to the next, to the next. So if you overlayer, it can be a problem unless you choose here where it says narrow the audience and that's where you put for sale by owner. In this case, because my geographic limit is so tight, 
you're going to see fewer than a thousand for sure. Where's narrow the area? So a uh, narrow is the next selection underneath the the top uh, detailed. So it must also match at least one of the following. It's in between the exclusion okay. and the top. What did you say to put there? So if you wanted to put a bunch of those layers, but you definitely only wanted it to show to for sale by owner people, then in the narrow part you would put for sale by owner. Is that what I want? I wouldn't do it because there's going to be less than a thousand in your total group, so you're, it's highly unlikely that your ad will even go out to anybody at that you point. Just got up to a million people with what I put. That's probably because you're like way far out. Like maybe all over the United States. Oh, no. oh, it's because you're touching Manhattan. That's why. See, see right here. You're in Manhattan. Oh, thank you. Okay. I lost where you put exclude. Oh, exclude is below. So there. Keep going. Exclude should be. Oh, click on the white here. Oh, there you go. Sir. It'll be down there. Uh, yes, hold on one sec. Yes. I'm typing for sale by owner. Like it has all this. Yeah, support. scroll up. Oh. It, it's at the top of this. Mm. Oh, you've already selected. That's why. Oh. Yeah. Brent, yes. Here? Custom audience. Yep. You don't put anything in the custom audience oh, part. Okay. And then locations is good. Yep. Alright, so I took the full zip codes out. How do I get back into that thing where you do the radius thing? So type in in the locations include there. Yeah. Type in a city oh, or yeah. And how the connection type any kind of connection? So what do we do with the connection types? Probably nothing. However, if you had a, a page locally that somehow you could tie in, let's say you had a events in Middletown uh, City or something like that, and it had 10,000 people in that page, you could add the connection type to only choose people within your page likes, or you could do friends of those, or you could say exclude all of that. For me, in our realm right here, just leave that blank. No real need to, to do that. So why would I put accountant in the FISBO? Anybody know stats on um, what the profession of FISBOs are? No, accountants. accountants. Seriously? Top profession for FISBOs are accountants. How about lawyers? And lawyers, right. See personalities, they can do it themselves. Exactly. <laughs> right, so those of you, yeah, click create audience. So those of you that were in class last week, remember we flipped the workbook on its side and we did that demographic profile with all the boxes? See how that plays in now? Remember we talked about, okay, let's say we're going to do a FISBO audience. What are their roles in life? What are their incomes? What are their professions? What do they do? What do they read? What? Now you see where all this comes into play? So important. Now you can go back and reprofile your personas on that worksheet and now it all makes sense because if you can plug those into Facebook now you're highly likely to reach the people you want to okay good all right so whatever stage you're at you can always go back and edit it but click um, scroll all the way to the bottom and click create audience so we don't put nothing in add connection type no nope. yeah leave add connection type leave that blank okay now, for all of the saved audiences that I have in there, I think there's probably 15 to 20, pick and choose the ones in the book that most relate to the people you feel like you should target going forward. I would also do this because you never know what open houses and um, home types that you're going to buy and sell with. Also make sure for each demographic category for first time home buyers, for move ups, for luxury, for downsizers, that you definitely create a saved audience for each one of those types. 
because when you start to use the ads manager over and over to release these ads if you can just select those saved audiences all the time it makes life so much easier instead of thinking oh I don't want to put this ad out because it's going to take me 20 minutes to retype all this stuff it's nice when you could just click it and move along right it's it, like I mentioned last week this is part of that the foundation underneath your house and the more um, excellent you can build it the stronger you can build it now the more you'll be excited to to do all the fun stuff which is the painting and picking up the countertops and all that okay all right we're gonna build another different type of audience called a custom audience so all of you should now have the look that I have click the blue create audience button and then custom audience instead of saved audience and you're presented with several different options here you have a customer file and I'll explain all these you have website traffic and ignore the other two but also engagement let me cover what each one is customer file every contact you ever get you should from now on so long as you have their permission to market to them you should now go into Facebook and upload their information or copy and paste their information into a custom audience especially email um, and phone numbers that you get from open houses that is their low-hanging fruit as we're gonna go through into uh, the next four weeks where we start doing video and branding you can after every open house you do on Monday morning or even Sunday night you could launch a special ad to the 15 people you may have met at that open house and they would see you all of a sudden pop up in their in their news feed and it would cost you maybe 25 cents to reach those 10 people then next week maybe or maybe even on Friday or Saturday you put out a different ad that says something like hey are you going to open houses this weekend remember me click here and I'll send you a list of all the best open houses to go to this weekend for a quarter okay it's work remember last week I told you that this is going to be some work involved here maybe even two to three hours a day but if you're strategic with it that's how you win well so Faye missed last week somebody tell Faye what I always send my people um, to open houses with everybody remember or did I not talk about it here open house passes. yes open house pass else. everybody did I not talk about that here okay get business cards made with your regular business card front and on the back instead of saying something like referrals or whatever whatever on the back simply say this is my client please um, honor the relationship um, and the clients will hand that to the open house agent and they won't have to sign in at the open house the business card basically represents so here's how I would pass it off to my clients I would simply say here's a stack of 25 business cards every time you go to an open house I know it's annoying to have to sign in to these open houses every single time right they all answer yes here take these 25 cards when you walk into the open house this is basically like a, a get out of jail free card you never have to sign in hand them this just say I'm working with so-and-so if they hand out all 25 of those and they've clearly said I'm working with with um, Roberta I'm working with Roberta I'm working with the Roberta do you think that when they're ready to put in an offer or go see outside of open houses they're gonna remember Roberta I hope so. yeah <laughs> see? it's one thing you can do that's so easy I, there's one team that does it exclusively here and it, it's such a great idea they come in with cards from Roberta just yeah <laughs> and if you don't want to give out cards Roberta will give you a stack of hers Gladly. okay it's just one more thing you can do and how cheap are business cards I mean it, the places through KW charge like three times what Vistaprint and some of these others do but just make up a simple card that says hey we want you to honor this relationship this is my client 
client signs the back of it, hand it off, and then they don't have to sign in. Just make sure the front side is compliant. Exactly. <laughs> and that's why I said, make sure that you use on your business card that it's proper on the front. And they're starting to look at these more clearly now too. So, and before you ever get your cards printed, you should pass it by those that are your team leaders anyways. There's no reason not to be in compliance. It's a lot of information you gotta put on there, but it, you know, don't be so creative. I mean, business cards are for handing out, just flying to everybody. So make sure they're compliant. Okay, so again, now you've got a stack of, of uh, people from an open house. You wanna get them into the system. So let's click here. You would click customer file, add customers from your own file, or copy and paste the data. If you have a CSV file that already has all of the information in it, you can upload the file. And a CSV is just another fancy word for an Excel file, but it's saved as a, a different extension. Or if you have it already pulled up on Excel, you can literally copy from your Excel file and paste it into this area and then Facebook matches all the data, uploads it into the system and whomever matches that data now becomes somebody that you can market to. Super simple. Okay, now that's a kind of a one-on-one -on -one thing for me to go through with you individually if you need it. Um, some of you have already been through that in a different class that we did. If you want, we'll set up another day where I'll literally sit for as many as you of you want, but you have to pull all your contacts together first. I will not sit with you if you don't have all of your contacts together in one place. Because you're gonna be pulling from this and that and this and that, and two hours later, we're finally getting to the Facebook stuff. So, when you're ready to sit down because you have all of your contacts in one place, call me and I'll sit with you and we'll, we'll do this together. All right? That's just one thing. You would name the audience, my email list, or Open Houses 2018, or First Time Home Buyer Open Houses. You can name it whatever you want, and you can have as many of these lists as you want. All right, I'm gonna hit cancel. The other ones that we wanna do, if you guys go back out of this, go to Create Audience, Custom Audience, we're going to go to engagement, and we're actually gonna do this together. At the very bottom, we, or third up from the bottom, we wanna click Facebook page. So everybody go there and click Facebook page. And what this is, is this is an audience of anybody who has uh, interacted with your Facebook page, which also means any of the posts that you've published in other people's feeds. So, case in point, remember how I told you the best engagement type ads have multiple pictures? If they're clicking on those, that's an engagement. If they've not clicked on anything but seen that post, they will not go into this audience. So you wanna lure them in by having multiple pictures in a post, because as soon as they click, or they comment, they like, they share, they get captured into this list on any of the pages you create. All 10, 20, whatever ones you do, three, four, they go into a list. So let's say you have a first time home buyer. Um, let's say that's your persona, and you've got a Facebook page specifically for first time home buyers. You might have 500 people in this engagement list and a hot new listing comes up for a first time home buyer in Manalapan. You shoot that out in an ad just to this list. You know these are people that are first time home buyers. So instead of sending it out to 10,000 people that might be first time home buyers, you've got a nice dedicated list. It's almost like an email list at that point. And instead of spending $10 a day, you're gonna spend a dollar or less. This is how you can reach the people that are most likely to do business with you without going broke. Okay, so um, scroll down. 
Oh, engagement. engagement. Oh, okay. okay? That's the key with the engagement, is that we want to make sure that anybody who's clicked on something, commented, liked, or shared, gets captured into these lists so that we can do our little ads to smaller groups of people. So if you set this up once, do they capture each time, or do yep. you have to set it up for each app? Nope. Years? You set it up for one page one time. And then for 365 days, it just accumulates and accumulates and accumulates. Page that you set up. Yep. Yep. But again, you only have to do it once, right. and then it's done. So when you're creating the page, you take this extra step. Perfect. Yep. And I'm telling you, you'd be surprised how quickly these pages um, accumulate, especially if you use an engagement type post and you reach 6,600 people of which 400 do clicks, in two weekends you might have close to a thousand people in this list for 40 bucks. So if you do an engagement type of post that's for first time home buyers, you're just assuming that if they click on it, that they are. Exactly, yep. Now, obviously, you know, it could be a downsizer, you know, because the price might be right, something like that, but you get as close as you can, and through your targeting, you're trying to isolate people that are in um, age categories at that point. So. so that little thing down there that says include more, if you have more pages that you've created, you can just click. Yeah, you could layer them in probably. Let's see. Sorry, no, that's right. Yeah, no, you could layer them in for sure. So let's say you wanted to create one of these custom audiences for all buyers. So you may have a page for first-time home buyers. You may have a page for downsizers. You you know you could layer them all into one and just call it buyers all together. Yeah, by all means. you I'm I'm telling you, if you take the time, 15 to 20 minutes at the most. If you take the time to set these up, you will be amazed how quickly these accumulate. Especially if you're spending some money on just those engagement ads that just kind of spray the word out and, and insist on getting clicks on multiple pictures, comments, likes, and shares. So how do you tie the engagement to the user? So, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, absolutely. So you said we're gonna do this now? We yeah, so if you, yeah, create one cu uh, custom audience here for at least one of your pages. If you wanna layer multiple pages on, you can, but go ahead, since we're right here right now, do at least your main business page. Create this custom audience. And in the name uh, spot, you would simply say, my name, main business page, and then hit create audience. Okay, so that will be for the Facebook page, right? I'm still behind. Yep, so click that. And then that's already your page there. Uh huh. It's all there. Put a title in there, Claudia's main business page, and then click create audience, and you're ready to go. Super quick. Anybody who visited your page? Anybody that visits the page, anybody that clicks on comment, like, share, any of that. It all happens all at once. Can you pick more than one of these choices then? Uh, yeah. It, so like this one says anyone who visited the page, are they supposed to? Yeah, there should be one that says like anybody that engages or um, like the default one is anything. Yeah. Engagement means like anything, all things. Does it, like mine's saying populating, does it say, is it creating it from anyone in the last six months or is it now going forward or what's it? Great question. So, will it backdate those that have been to your page? They say it does, probably not. Because I've created them for people that have had mass engagements on their page and, you know, it'll come up as like 100 people. Well, we know that there was way more than that. So, it may, it says that it will, but the likelihood of it is, I don't know. It may say 100 now, and tomorrow it might say 1,200, you know, so. Okay, so those two things alone, saved audiences and custom audiences are absolute gold to you. When we get into the video, um, next week it's all about kind of how to create videos, but in week four we're gonna tie this back to the video engagement. We're gonna create custom audiences when we actually have a video on our page. I'll show you how to create the video views audience and you'll see how cool that is. All right? What's the difference so, between choosing everyone who engages on this page to anyone who engages on this page?
No, that's anyone who visited the page. I would just say everyone. Leave it as the default for everyone who engages with the page. Yeah. Okay. So now Teresa's question was this. We've got all these people in this engagement audience. Now how do we send them something like a lead ad or something like that? So just watch up here. I'm going to show you because we're going to come back to this in week four. But I'm just going to show you real quick how we'll do that. We would go to the ads manager. If it loads. <laughs> okay. We would create an ad. For the most part, we're going to choose either traffic or lead form. I would most likely, almost 100% of the time, I choose lead form. So lead generation. Boy, it's slow in here. Facebook will always make the campaign name lead generation, but let's say it's a just listed at 123 main, you would name it just listed 123 main. Oh, not sure what's happening there. What's that? Yes, you cannot do it from personal profile. Okay, so I would say one, two, three, main. I would hit continue. And here's where you end up choosing the pages that you did. So you're pulling it from your main Facebook page. And when it gets into the audience targeting, on where it says custom audience any audience that you've created for your engagement pulls up here so you basically say hey Facebook I only want to reach the people that have clicked on the um, the engagement audience for the 55 and overs you can layer audiences in here too so if you've got audiences from multiple Facebook pages you can layer them all in you just select them one at a time. Now, every time, probably for all of us, up here it's going to say audience definition is unavailable because our audiences are going to be smaller. They're going to be under a thousand people for the most part. So don't worry about what it says up there. Sometimes it'll say a million when it's really ten. You know, it's, it's an inexact thing for Facebook. But that's exactly what we do. Now, how many of you have ever heard the term retargeting other than me saying it? Okay, this is a retargeting ad where you captured them with one ad, probably either a video views ad or an engagement ad, and now you're going to retarget a smaller group of people with a more expensive ad like a lead form dedicated to just this custom audience or just your email list. Just like that. Some of you have contact lists this long. If you put them in Facebook, Facebook would match all of those people and you could send your newsletter or your sphere of influence monthly thing to them just through Facebook. And if you, let's say your audience was a thousand people, you'll be lucky to spend five dollars in that entire campaign because Facebook that they won't be able to spend any more money. You'll reach a significant number of those people for like five dollars. One dollar a day, you know, for five days or you know, five dollars for one day, you'll reach a significant number of people that it they're actually you could email the same people and more people would probably find your ad on Facebook than they would open their e email. So So there's lots of yes. What about I'm not sure I'm not going to you. What about advertising um, on Instagram? Yep. Some people don't have Facebook. Right. They have Instagram. Right. Uh, of course, our millennials they love Instagram, and the only reason they have Facebook is because it's tied to Instagram. So um, when you get into when we create our ads going forward, you'll see that you can actually just send your ads just to Instagram as well. So for video. Um, one ad type, you can only do up to 15 seconds. 
another you can do up to 60 seconds that goes to Instagram. You may want to post some stuff on Instagram, but if it doesn't meet Instagram's policy, then, it, then they'll say you can't. But either way, through the ads manager, you can isolate just Instagram people too. Totally cool. Yep. So the templates are changing on Facebook for our pages. Right. So let's talk about that. Okay. Doesn't matter. Okay. That's all I needed to know. Yep. Here's why. It, it's rare, like supremely rare, that anyone will ever go to your Facebook page. If they ever go to your Facebook page, you should be surprised. Unlike our website websites, you know, the brentcramp.com, people never, if you even said, hey, do you even know how to go visit a web or a Facebook page? People would be like, no, I don't, <laughs> you know? But most of the time, they just, they don't even know how. If they search you using the bar at the top, Janet Giacchetti they put in, they'll see a personal profile and then a page. Chances are they'll go to the personal profile, not the page. So it's not important necessarily what your page looks like. You actually used to be able to customize it, like super custom. Now you can barely do anything. You'll be able to choose the old style or the new style that's coming up. Here's what I'd say about the Facebook page. The important part is that it's compliant. Make sure that every page that is on there, all of these pages you're creating, that the address is the agency address, that you have your correct information on there, that in the cover photo, if you sign up for Canva, I will share one of my templates with you that will ensure that you're compliant for KW. All right? This is why I suggested Canva, because we can share amongst each other. All right? Make sure you're compliant, because there's no reason not to be. You're not kidding anybody, and you could be fined. So just be compliant. All right? Claudia, I just did hers a couple weeks ago. And really, it, to be compliant, it's the same stuff that's on your signs. Okay? It has to have the KW logo. has to clearly state office and cell number differentiated with the exact title. It has to say each office is independently owned and operated. And the logo has to be clearly, if you have your own personal logo, the KW logo has to appear larger than what your personal logo is. And That's really most of it, yes. And you can't just say realtor. Yeah, realtor associate. associate. Yep, realtor associate with the registration mark. Okay? Again, if, if if we need to meet separately just to make sure that everybody's compliant, I'll insist that you work through Canva so that you learn how to use Canva and use it to your advantage. Because it's all set up. They have templates for Facebook covers already out there and you can pick and choose and it, it's so easy to use. So I'll force you to use Canva. All right, so we've got about five, 10 minutes left. Any questions thus far? We did a lot, right? I mean, we feel like we did a little, but we covered a lot. This is probably stuff that you haven't necessarily done before, but now the light bulbs turn on a bit and say, oh, I've kind of been missing the boat. I could have been capturing a lot of people all along. What could I have done? Like, you're always posting on, on your business page. Yeah, but nothing on this scale. Right, so now, for every post, she could have been tracking Maybe hundreds of people because she puts videos out. Okay? So now you set, you lay the foundation, and forevermore, all of these people start getting collected in here. Them, yeah, see? <laughs> but you don't have to anymore. That's the key. Because now you know. Every time we put in ad Hold on, we got a bunch of people here. We'll start here and then we'll go back. Okay, so every time we do an ad in our business page or do something in our business page, we should always have to pay. That's what it yes. comes from, in order to get those leads. Right. So Claudia says, every time we produce an ad on our business page, we should expect to pay. I would say yes. Okay? Now, if you can't afford it, remember the two choices? Get a part-time job, borrow or steal some money from somebody so that you can advertise, or still post but understand that there should be zero expectations. You're, it's just fluff. So, Can you take your personal Facebook and change it to business? It, 
your personal is always just your personal and in order to even have a business page you have to have a personal page okay, so, what do you do? Bring everybody on your personal so you invite them I'll show you that before you leave on the right hand side well I'll show you I'll show everybody just in case we don't know let me get here to my um, business page and then it becomes public what what becomes public your business page is always public it's all, yeah, they say yeah, no, you can't have a private business page. So, let's say you go, like this is one of our other pages from a different business. Can you just pick the people you want? Yep, absolutely, I'll show you that right now. So on the right hand side over here, and this is best done on a laptop or, or a Mac or PC, you scroll down until you get to this section right here. Uh, where'd it go? Of course they moved it around on me. It used to be right in here where you would invite your friends. So, hold on, let me look. Oh, here we go. In the community part, here it says invite friends. So you click that blue button, all of your friends will start to show up. Oh look, Janet. <laughs> you just start clicking in here and Facebook automatically sends an invitation to those people don't feel bad if five to ten percent of the people actually like your page unless you're like a crazy celebrity or something and then everybody will I'm sorry, where did you get to that? yeah so you go to your your business page or any of the pages really that you're creating and on the right hand side you're going to see in the community section the word invite friends you click that button it'll also tell you how many people have already liked your page yes I have two different emails and two different Facebook pages you just choose one of them okay. so yep Rhonda you had a question so if you're doing a live video can you can you use that as an ad yes so here's what happens you record the video first okay. then when it saves it saves into the video sections on your page then you can if you want you could boost it or you could go in create a video views ad and then it would pull in that that live Thank video I have a question sure okay, now you mentioned boost so we're creating these ads so what happened when we're in our business page and the little button it says boost right should we hit it there so or is it gonna do like what you said it's going like anything anyway? right so if you've put all these saved audiences and custom audiences together they will be available with the boost button but remember if you're going to press the boost button it's for an engagement ad only expect zero names numbers emails anything like that the purpose is to just spray the information out there but you can at least send it to your saved and custom audiences at that point okay. all right so it is is and can be the easy button still if you've got some of this other stuff set up in the back already now for open houses again if you've made a post on your page uh, specifically for a property using that boost button is it's okay because it's going out basically as an engagement ad but make sure that you use one of your targeted groups that you just set up all right that's that's the benefit if you put these groups together these audiences together then you'll always have the right people that you're sending the message to and at that point you can press the boost button and you're okay all right I would personally rather you go in and, and use the ads manager so that you get totally used to it but the easy button is what it is it's easy so sometimes easy is good what is this guided advertising experience yeah so um, it's two different choices you got two they're like giving you like it's probably Facebook's way of trying to make it easy for you um, I wouldn't necessarily do it here's the thing about realtors in general uh, because we're a very hyper local business most of the guided options aren't going to fit for us 
um, on Facebook or in Google Ads for that matter. Uh, it, a lot of what Facebook publishes they want people to go out there on multinational stages and you know things like that so those guided creations are everything but local so because we're local I tend to stay away from those options because I'd rather us be more hyper targeted on on what actually will create business for us so but you know let's say you're selling fitness videos on on online or something or you know you're a national Mary Kay rep or something like that, then some of that might actually be more applicable to you. Okay. More questions? Okay. So homework. Again? <laughs> well, you didn't do it the last time. <laughs> you thought about it, though. That's the key. All right. Make sure you get the Facebook pages, at least a couple of them created. Also make sure that you hand select the saved audiences that you believe you'll use the most. And that's pretty much it. You can work through, go back through the book if we skipped a section or didn't cover adequately a section. Make sure you fold the page over or something so we can come back to it. Next week we start with video. Everybody, if you have a smartphone, bring a smartphone with you. Don't forget your makeup. Yes. <laughs> Paul, don't forget your makeup. We're out of town. Right. <laughs> um, we're going to each record a 10 second video that just simply introduces our business page so that I can start to show you how to build a video views audience um, so that you understand the correlation between video and, and something like that. So we'll have a little fun next week. And, or not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe. Yes. Um, I, I'm telling you, with, you know, by the end of next year at this point, you guys will be like, ah, oh, it's cake. It's cake. Right? Or you'll be sitting in a corner rocking back and forth, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> so.